Hello, everyone. Good evening. Good evening. Um, welcome to my first podcast. Um, I'm just going to wait for a second as I wait on the guests to join. Um, for those who don't know, my name is Zoe Sarbo, and we are about to get started with a very lively and engaging conversation. So, you know, because in life, if you want to gain, hello, hello, no pain, no gain. So, there was some talk. I think I'm hearing someone. All for the sake of freedom. So, I thank God that He got me here to show my appreciation to the. Uh, All right, I'm just waiting on our guest. So while we wait, welcome everyone. Good evening. Good evening. Um, I know it's a, it's it's raining outside, so um, it's a it'll be something interesting and engaging for us to look at and listen to um, on this Thursday evening. I am here at Afri Soul Marketplace um it's practically become my second home and so i am going to have a very engaging and fun-filled evening so give me one second let me see where one second as we wait welcome welcome hi everybody Welcome. Okay. So, um, the guest for this evening is logging in right now. Um, so while we wait, I was I'm going to start off by saying that I have been planning and working on um, on a podcast for quite some time now, for over a year now, and um, I have been, you know, putting together a list of topics um, on what I'm going to talk about, and I'm, you know, in the process of working through um, what you know I'll be talking about. Um, I, you know, came up with a list of topics and Juneteenth happened and I decided I'll make a, a switch and a change on what to talk about. But for those of you who do not know who I am, for those of you who are meeting me for the first time, uh, my name is Zoe Sarbo and this is the my first broadcast, my first um, podcast um, program um, called Across the Diaspora. And it looks like Baba Amin is here and ready. Baba Amin, I will join you in now. Um, and then I will just continue with our introductions. Is that okay? Thumbs up. Awesome, awesome, awesome. So I'm adding him in. Welcome, welcome. Baba Amin. Give thanks. Give yeah. thanks. Peace. Peace. Peace and blessings, sir. Peace and blessings. Um, so for our audience, um, I know um, there are going to be some individuals who are not familiar with myself, neither you. So I'm just doing a brief introduction uh, for those who do not know who I am. I am living in Phoenix, Arizona, have been doing so for some time, for quite a few years. Very much engaged in the community. Um, we very much engaged in a particular organization, the Phoenix Local Organizing Committee. Um, I'm an educator. I'm a business owner and just passionate of all things cultural, um, particularly um, um, Afrocentric culture. And um, I was invited by a member of the Our Black Fathers Committee, uh, Brother Bilal. Um, he invited me, but he's a member of the Our Black Fathers Committee. And he told me months ago, hey, you know, Zoe, we have an event coming up and I would love for you to be a part of it. And I was like, okay, sure. <laughs> uh, so over the course of time of planning, he said, yeah, you know, this is, these are the details, please come and speak. 
and I spoke, I spoke particularly on education and um, I was blessed to meet Baba Amin. He was- You did a great job, Tuzo. Thank you, thank you. <laughs> I don't know what came over me. I, it was the moment, the energy, the atmosphere right. and the topic. So right. um, I we connected <clears throat> and um, we, uh, I, you know, in, as things developed and Juneteenth came around and um, I heard Baba Amin spoke at a different platform with a different individual and he can go into that yes and i had some questions for him and i'm like you know what <laughs> let me invite him let me invite him <laughs> to our first podcast so welcome welcome thank you um well, uh, thanks you for can having me. okay thanks for having me you know it's an honor to be here congratulations am i coming through good clear loud and clear um, all right good good yes, we have some weather clear having some weather out here in in, in columbia south carolina you know oh. but i think we'll be okay i think we'll be okay zoe congratulations on your new uh podcast thank you thank you know you. Uh, uh you reached out and, and uh uh told me that this was your plan and you know you strike me as a type of sister that said when you when you set your mind on doing something you're gonna get it done i i, I yes <laughs> <laughs> You know, so so, you so some time, yes, yes, right, right, right. But you're gonna get it done, and, and we here. You know, we here. Uh, yes. You can't have too many platforms, especially platforms that are enlightening our people, uplifting our people, encouraging our people. Platforms that are sharing powerful information uh, with our community. You can't have too many. So thank you for uh, taking the time out to to build this platform, and it's an honor to be the first guest. No one can take yes. this from me. As <laughs> Unfolds. No one can take this from me. I will forever be the first guest on on your new podcast. So it's an honor to be here. You're welcome. <laughs> of course, of course, you're welcome. And seeing that you have so much experience in this capacity, <laughs> right? Okay. Not a little. Uh, guide, yeah. guidance, guidance, guidance. So, yeah. um, so a little bit about yourself. A little bit right. about yourself. Who are you? What you do? And you know. Okay. Yeah. Well, again, my name is Baba. I mean. Imamu Ojuo. People just affectionately call me Baba Amin. Um, I was born and raised in Fort Worth, Texas. Um, I'm an independent educator, co-founder, along with my beautiful wife and Koyo Ojuo of the Uhura yes. Academy, now called yes. Uhura Academy Education Solutions. Uh, I'm an independent educator. I'm a grassroots organizer. Uh, I'm a hip hop activist uh, as well. Uh, I've been working with young people for over 30 years. I just had my 50th birthday this past uh, weekend. Really you know, Yeah, you know, beautiful, yeah. beautiful. I spent my entire adult life either working with young people or doing music and, and usually mixing them both together, you know. And so uh, uh, I'm a blessed man in that um, I don't have a job. What I do, uh, what I get paid for is the stuff that I would do for free. I just do it so well that people pay me for it. You know, I was taught early on it. That's the secret of success. And uh, being a part of the African Senate uh, school movement, the the global new African education movement uh, is a blessing. Uh, I also serve uh, as the minister, co-minister of education, along with my wife and Koyo, uh, uh, of the provisional government of the Republic of New Africa. And uh, very proud uh, of that role as well. And my most, my most, the job I'm most proud of is I'm a father of, of yes, eight children, yes. you know, eight beautiful children. Well, four of them yes. grown, four of them children, got half of them, half of them out of here, got four more to go. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> so I, I enjoy babahood and uh, that's who I am. Like I said, I was born and raised in Fort Worth, Texas, founded Uhura Academy in 2010, uh, uh, went on to help build schools in other cities as well, including uh, the Prince Circle of Legends Academy in Houston, Texas, uh, and Uhura Academy, South Carolina, uh, or UASC International, uh, where we are stationed uh, today. And, you know, our goal is to build African centered schools and African centered programs all over the world. Awesome. Awesome. Look at that resume. Listen to that resume. Not right? bad. Not bad. <laughs> not bad. Not bad. You know, you know, yeah. most of us are trying. We, 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 we got to keep up. We got to keep up. Yes, Thank you for that. Thank you for your dedication. Thank you for your work and everything that you do. Um, and, you know, this is the reason why, you know, I was drawn to having you being my first. Um, first uh, guest among others and we will get into that 
we right. will get into that, right? And um, I will want to talk about the school thing. I'm an educator. You're an educator. We connected right. on that, um, you know, as part of the Phoenix Local Organizing Committee. Mm -hmm. um, I'm not sure how much I'm allowed to say, but we're in conversations, right? That's right. Uh, That's right. People, guiding, mentoring, and counseling us in starting an African-centered school here in Phoenix, Arizona. I so say, we're I super excited about that. Yes. I'm, I'm energized too, just, you know, as a, as a person who was at the original Million Man March to, yeah. to, to encounter an active local organizing committee, you know yeah. what I'm saying? This, this far out from the actual march to see how active you all are in Phoenix is truly energizing. And I, I, yeah. I, I, I look forward to working with y'all. We locked in. I got some great things coming up, some collaboration coming up with the Our Black Fathers uh, okay. uh, committee as well. So. Yeah. Great, great. Shout out to them. They're based in Phoenix, Arizona, too. I'm doing some amazing things also. Yes. So shout out to them. Um, and so um, wait, I just I just lost my thought in where, where I was going. Mm -hmm. Um, so in regards to oh, I I was thinking of something. Shout out to brother um Shamikas Muhammad, right? Leader of the Phoenix Local Organizing Committee. Oh, Jamaica, um, yes. The, the visionary um behind, you know, making sure that you know the the wishes of um, the Honorable Louis Far Farrakhan is um, comes to fruition in regards to the LOC here in Phoenix. So, um, shout out to him. Now, um, the reason why we're speaking here today. Right. So, um, I, I'm I'm coming from the perspective of, of someone who's learning, right? And right. um, that's the position I'm taking today. You being the teacher and educating all of us. I gotcha. say that to say because you are a, um, you're a, um, it's what I should say. You're from Texas, right? That's right. You're originally. Born and from, raised. Fort Worth, born and Uncle raised, Sam. Right? And mm -hmm. so this topic would be fitting, right? An individual like yourself who is originally from Texas. And I'm also saying that because I'm, I'm not originally from the United States. I wasn't born and raised here. So I'm coming here with a new, pers a different perspective, different understanding. And so as things develop, I am trying to grasp an understanding of what the on, on Juneteenth means, what okay. it should be, and what I, what I, what, you know, how, how am I um, witnessing how it's being developed currently, right? And so um, I see this so important and critical to us as a people because Juneteenth, it's called Juneteenth in the United States, right? But back home in the Caribbean, it's called emancipation, right? Yeah. It's, um, you know, in different regions where we, where there was slavery, we do all celebrate that emancipation or, you know, yes. the breaking of the bondage in some way or another. So right. this is not something that is unique to the United States. So mm -hmm. I'm saying that to say that I'm very much, you know, we have this um, celebration right. also back home in Guyana, where I'm from. Um, and so I, I love the idea, I love the concept of right. being However, I have questions in, you know, the way in which it's manifesting Thanks to, you know, having a holiday and now federally Absolutely. recognized holiday. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Somehow black, black freedom became an, an American pastime all of a sudden. It, it yeah. is. It is. Mm -hmm. We're all enjoying it. We're all enjoying right. it. Right. Um, so being the historian that we both are, um, I'm, I'm maybe if you would like to give us sure. a little background on Juneteenth and what okay. it means to Texans and, you know, how it's it has grown. Um, All right. Um, so Juneteenth. Right. Which is which is just June 19th for short. You know, you know, mm -hmm. uh, 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 black people here in America, we are masters of the English language and we're not afraid to innovate. Uh, when it comes to the English language. I know a lot of folks say we speak bad English. Now we speak black English. Our ancestors mastered this language and, and figured out a way to speak it that was phonetically comfortable for us, right? Yeah. And so yeah. Juneteenth uh, uh, means June, it's June 19th, uh, yeah. and it, it makes reference to June 19th, 1965. Uh, the common narrative that you get is that that's the year that the Union Army at, after the closing of the Civil War, uh, the Union Army arrived in Texas, in Galveston, uh, General Gordon Granger, and, and, and issued a proclamation letting uh, the Black people in Galveston know, in Galveston, Texas, know that freedom had arrived, that, that the war was over, 
and freedom has arrived. Um, the narrative also says that from that point on, on June 19th, every year, it started in Texas where black people would celebrate Emancipation Day, but, but became commonly known as Juneteenth. Right. And, yeah. and so um, being from Texas, you know, before I get into too deep into the narrative, being from Texas, I've, pr I've celebrated Juneteenth my whole life. There's always been a Juneteenth celebration uh, as black people migrated out of Texas. Juneteenth celebrations began to be uh, uh, celebrated. This is in the late 1800s and early 1900s, uh, celebrated in California, in Chicago. Uh, there were Juneteenth celebrations as far away as D.C. and, and Buffalo, New York and, and other places. Uh, uh, so they would take it with them. But the, the prevailing narrative has been that it's kind of a Texas thing because uh, black people in Texas were the last group to get the news about emancipation. Right. And and so so I even grew up with people, you know, meeting people from outside of the state. They're like, what is Juneteenth? I ain't never heard of that. I've even heard people. I even encountered people who clowned us like. Y'all celebrating getting the news last? What is that to celebrate? Yeah, you, you, yeah. you know what I'm saying? And yeah, so, yeah. Uh, uh, but we can get into all of that tonight. But that's yeah. like, that's the general narrative that's put on Juneteenth. But it's a lot deeper than that. Yes, yes. Thank you for, for that, 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 that background. Um, so, you know, in, in preparing for, well, originally I was just going to, you know, do my own thing, my own thing, Majiga, on, on Juneteenth. Mm -hmm. Right. And in doing research um, and digging deeper, I realized how much it is that I realized that I could not do justice to the topic. It had to be someone who is really homegrown and has a deep understanding right. of it for me to even attempt to really, you know, give an explanation and, you know, an understanding, a fair understanding um, of, 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 of the subject area overall. Um, and yeah, go ahead. Oh, no. No, I think that is I think one of the things that is important for people to understand is that Juneteenth is not a celebration of the ending of slavery. It's a oh. celebration of the beginning of freedom, the beginning of a freedom process. The first thing our ancestors realized when the so-called news came was that freedom was not an event. Freedom was a process and that just because if something's written on a piece of paper, that doesn't mean that everybody's going to adhere to it. It had to be enforced. So there was trouble ahead, you know. So, so, and, that, and that's Texas, that's in Georgia, that's in Mississippi, that's wherever Africans received the news that emancipation had came. Well, you still had to deal with a class. Nobody went to jail for the Civil War. Mm. Right, right, right. Those, those, those soldiers and former slave owners, those who survived, they came home. Mm hmm. Mm -hmm. They came home and they got their land back. OK, yep. they were yeah. compromises with the United States government. The United, mm -hmm. they, there were no Confederate political prisoners, <laughs> mm -hmm. you know, exactly. like, like, like we, we still have political prisoners from the black power movement in, mm -hmm. in, in prison right now today. You know, uh, uh, so so you had slave owners uh, uh, that were coming home. Well, Texas was a special case because Texas was the furthest state away from any violence that were going on during the Civil War. Matter of fact, there were no major Civil War battles that took place in Texas. Texas mm -hmm. actually served as a refuge for slave mm -hmm. owners that to bring their enslaved Africans during the Civil War. It was also a refuge along with Louisiana for French slave owners to bring their enslaved people after Aiti won its independence, right? So mm -hmm. there's already a, 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 a global international undertones to what was going on in Texas, right? And, yep. and, and so Texas being the refuge for, for renegade slave owners, and not only from renegade slave owners from, from Haiti, but also renegade slave owners from Mexico, who had also abolished slavery uh, some years before the United States did. And Mexico was actually a place where a lot of Black people escaped to during yeah. Right. Mm -hmm. and, and so when when the news came, right, it had to be enforced and it was already a global. It had global implications, particularly when it got to the state of Texas. Yes, yes, yes. Um, and that's and every you, you said so much there already. Um, what stood out to me among the things that you said is the fact that freedom is a process. Right. Yes. Um, and, and one of the things that I you know discovered when I, um, during my research, 
was that even though the Emancipation Proclamation was um, completed and, um, and then you had the 13th Amendment, I noticed, and this is something I would like you to speak on, that there, that Mississippi, Mississippi, in fact, took some time in ratifying that amendment. Yes. Um, and so on paper, legally, they were not necessarily free, right? Mm -hmm. And so for me is, um, a, there is that gap of true um, right. relief from bondage and true freedom that even right. though you have this signatory, you know, um, 13th Amendment and signatory Emancipation Proclamation, right. that in realities, alongside Texas, right, you had these other states um, that still had, you know, um, enslaved Africans, right, in bondage. Right. Um, and right. New Jersey, I don't know, are you sure? Well, I, there, I, are records, there are records of, of, of Black people being enslaved in this country as late as the 1960s and early 1970s yes. in, in certain areas. In a lot of places, slavery just changed form. It didn't go away, you know. Uh, for example, that loophole that they put in the Thirteenth Amendment—that's that slavery is outlawed everywhere except when you're convicted of a crime, yes. right? Well, that was a major loophole that was yes. immediately used when once whites took power, because you had ten years after the Civil War, the Reconstruction period, where troops were still stationed in major areas in the South, where where these new laws were being enforced, and in that time. Black people were acquiring land, were getting involved in politics, the whole nine yards. Matter of fact, the public school system got its biggest boost during Reconstruction because of the insistence on Black people to get education, to have mm -hmm. access to education, right? But once uh, a, a deal was struck towards the end of Reconstruction to pull the troops out of the South, then you get the advent of Jim Crow, and then you get the poison pill, which that's inside of the 13th Amendment, that poison pill to be activated that says a slave is outlawed except for the uh, conviction of a crime. Well, Criminal guess what crime. we're going to do? We're going to criminalize, criminalize regular everyday activity. Criminalize. So yep. one of the biggest laws they use were the vagrancy laws. And the vagrancy laws basically said, if I caught you and you're not working, you can't prove to me that you're working, you're not doing anything, I can lock you up. And if I lock you up, I can sell your labor. Well, that's mm -hmm. labor, right? Yeah. And so yep. this pe peonage system, this 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 uh, uh, peonage system, a uh, labor contracting system was built in the South and it was basically slavery 2.0. You also had the, the sharecropping system that was set up in the South as well. The tenant farming yes. system that was set up in the South as well that led to a lot of Black people being tied to the land without being able to expand their farm or build because they were being cheated by mm -hmm. the people who they were renting the farms from. So, yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. Freedom is a process, not it an is. event. Now, everybody just start dancing. But I'll, I'll say this one thing that's unique about the United States, Blacks in the United States, as opposed to, say, IET or even Guyana and other places where where when when our people sought freedom, they sought nationhood as yeah. a part of their freedom. They sought control of government as a part of their freedom, whereas in the United States, we sought citizenship. Oh. We sought to be a part of the nation. Oh that had mm -hmm. enslaved us as opposed to uh, building our own nation. Now you did, interesting enough, have black people who wanted that, who wanted to build a nation of their own. We had, there were black organizations that wanted to get away from the United States. Mm -hmm. Matter of fact, Abraham Lincoln actually proposed to black leaders an idea of setting up a black colony in Central America, as mm -hmm. opposed to having black people become citizens of the United States. Mm -hmm. So that's just mm -hmm. another interesting tidbit. So when you're seeking to become a citizen of the nation that enslaved you, now the freedom process is even more of a process. Yes, yes, you yes. Know, oh my gosh, yes, yes. And that is and that that's and, a and, different and, dynamic. It is different. It is different, mm -hmm. right? Um, and and I, I I will say though that um it, Yes, there, you know, there, there were celebrations, you know, you know, they had their mm -hmm. parties, the barbecues, you know, this in celebration of, you know, the, the, the recognition of being, you know, having the bondage removed, right, um, which has evolved over time. Um, and, and it was never truly freedom 
um, for, you know, for um, African Americans. Um, and, you, you know, I, in, in the research I was looking at that you, over the course of American history, you have, um, as you mentioned, the Jim Crow era, right? Mm -hmm. um, you had, but um, you had, um, what is segregation, right? And then right. you had um, the civil rights movement. So in each phase, right, there, is, there are critical moments in time, moments in American history where African Americans with every chance they try to make advances because the Jim Crow was in response to reconstruction, right? Mm -hmm. um, and then you have the civil rights movement, right? And so right. every time there's ch attempts to, uh, to advance in some way, there's a big event, right? It was very damaging, catastrophic, or, you know, made severe impact um, on the community right. in regards to that, in regards to that question of freedom. And so right. when I Google online, what is Juneteenth? And you see, Google tells me that it's a celebration of freedom. I am like, well, what is this holiday be, be, becoming, right? Who right. is, um, who is framing the narrative right. of what this holiday really means, right? Um, and, 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 and how it should be represented and celebrated within well, the United well, States. let's be real. The only reason why Juneteenth is a federal holiday is because it's a pacification attempt. You know, it's because of the pressure that was brought on with George Floyd and all the, the police terrorism, the, the Black Lives Matter, uh, the, the question of reparations coming up uh, because now, now lately, when Democrats say they black people friend, black people are starting to say, what about reparations? And you'll mm -hmm. notice during primaries and all that, everybody's friendly. Like, yeah, we definitely should talk about it. Definitely should talk about it. Then they get in the office and say, no, we're not going to do that. We're going to give you Juneteenth. Mm -hmm. uh, we're going to give you the first black female on the Supreme Court. Mm -hmm. uh, we're gonna, you, you know, one, one, of the, one of the tactics to pacify when our demands aren't being met is to give us black faces and traditionally white spaces. Yeah. Right. Mm, and so yeah. recognizing Juneteenth as a federal holiday is just that it, it, it's mm. a gesture politicized by the Democratic Party to show mm. favor to black people. We're going to recognize something that y'all do anyway. Yeah. But yeah. now we're going to yeah. recognize it as a federal holiday. And then for a lot of black people, again, we're still in that mindset of seeking acceptance and seeking citizenship. For now, a lot of black people are like, yeah, yeah, Juneteenth, yeah. But you know, you 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 know Juneteenth been here. You, you know what I'm saying? Exactly. And, and it exactly. could have been exactly. as big as it is if we wanted it to be. You know what I'm yeah. saying? But yeah. but again, when it's recognized by the federal government, they throw dollars behind it. There are opportunities now that wasn't there before. Federal everything federal means money. That just means that this is yeah. something that taxpayer dollars can go behind. So if you're doing yeah. a Juneteenth celebration, now's the time to write that grant. And and so now you see that, you know, and then the capitalists get to come out. Walmart gets to have a Juneteenth ice cream and, 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 and that sort of thing, right? Yeah. So it's a pacification thing. Most Black people, though, most li like me, you know, we're doing what we've always done. And mm -hmm. then I take advantage of it getting into the national conversation by jumping on platforms and controlling the narrative on Juneteenth, yeah. because no matter what you say about black people in America, navigating this place takes skill, it takes resilience, it takes creativity, and we've done it in a way that has opened the door for Africans throughout the diaspora mm -hmm. to enjoy opportunities over here, however limited they are. You give black folks just a little wiggle room and we are gonna do what we got to do. So when yeah. we say, well, what's this freedom they were celebrating? Understand this, if you got the news in 1865 and you went out and exercised some freedom, like got some land, built the house, and you still make it back to the barbecue in 1866, you did something. Yep, you survived. If you get to 1867 you and you found your mother who was sold when you were a baby or you found your siblings, because Juneteenth also served as a family reunion. Our families yes. were split apart doing slavery. So Juneteenth yeah. was the beacon. By the yeah. time 1900 came around in places like Houston, you would have over 5,000 people at the Juneteenth gap. Mm -hmm. But they yeah. weren't just there to eat barbecue. We were there to share uh, 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 advice. 
We were there to honor our elders because they've been surviving the longest. We were there to build upon whatever it is that we've been working on. We were reuniting with family. We were repairing ourselves. Yes, yes. As yeah, best, I, and you have to honor that. You have oh, we, to honor we do. That. We do, we do, we do. And but but you you mentioned a few things, right? And in in you know, under the topic of celebration, right? So right. you know, federal holiday. There's money going around. You know, for the past two years, I've noticed. You know, these um huge Juneteenth celebrations is happening with big companies um, whose logos and names are attached to these celebrations. Right. However, there there is some concern as to the, the depth of um what this celebration what these celebrations look like right because i'm understanding at that period of time right um it was very much celebratory right um but as we we come down the line two three hundred years later right and in we we have an understanding of what it means to be black in america what it means to be an african in, in the united states right what does our celebration look like and for me that's one of my concerns Okay. Um, because with the influx of dollars, right, do you see there being a, um, a, a damper and a control in which we have deep engaging conversations? At well, that well, absolutely. Well, well, absolutely. Uh, what, you know, Zoe, what to do with the African mind has been the number one agenda uh, when it comes to building a na historical narrative in the United States since, eman since so-called emancipation. You know, um, our history is suppressed, period, in this country. Yeah. Our story is suppressed with or without Juneteenth in, yeah. in this country. You know, uh, go to a public school and find the curriculum that talks about who we were before slavery and come back and tell me where you at, because I need yeah, to see what they're talking it. about. Right. Yeah. So so that suppression already happened. So, yes. It's, it's an attempt to control the narrative, control the conversation. But just like we've done. Uh, since we've been here, we've always had a conversation underneath their narrative. Mm -hmm. When our ancestors were on the plantation, the narrative on the porch was these niggers is happy. And we did them a favor by taking them out of Africa and giving them Jesus and teaching them this. Ain't that right, boy? And you had that African that said, yes, sir, boss. Thank you so much. But there was always conversations going on in the hills. They said, no, nah, man, I'm an Akan. I'm an Ashanti. I'm Mandinka. You know, we come from kings and queens. And as soon as they go to sleep, we're going to kill everybody. As soon as they leave the gate open, somebody's going to get out. So those serious conversations always happen. So, yes, you're going to have these big federally funded events and, and all that. And they're going to an attempt to control the narrative. But don't yeah. think the conversation hadn't been infiltrated already on the ground. Yeah. And that, that organizing can't go on you know, in the areas where they ain't really checking for us like mm -hmm. that. You, you mm -hmm. understand what I'm saying? Yeah. So, yeah. so we had a huge celebration here in Columbia, South Carolina. I, I was honored to, to, to yes. keynote, you know, yes. but, but we did some real business. We did some real business and some real connecting with black owned businesses and, and, and connecting directly with families who are looking for education solutions for their children, uh, uh connection with organizations. So, so yeah, that, you know, they're going to call it. We're coming out. We're coming out. But that's an opportunity for those of us who are actually building on the ground to get mm -hmm. out and get to know the community better. Because yeah. we have them all in one place and everybody's in the mood to be black. Yeah. <laughs> yeah isn't that great? <laughs> yes. That's beautiful. That great? I love going places where I can wear my gear and yeah, man, and, and somebody who ain't never seen it can say, oh, man, that's nice. What What is that right there? <laughs> They don't ask you that at the Christmas parade. You, you understand yeah. what I'm saying? They, yes. they, 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 ain't wear, yes. <laughs> they don't ask yeah. you that on Easter Sunday. If I wear this on yeah. Easter Sunday, they ain't going to ask me that. But if yeah. I wear it during yeah. Black History Month or at the Juneteenth Festival, that's another opportunity. I see it yeah. as an opportunity to teach. Yeah. And, and speaking of teaching, right, and, 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 and framing the narrative and being in control of the narrative. So um, tell me if I'm overthinking this, because I'm seeing the, those um, uh, large corp corporations, right, large companies, federal dollars, um, the media, right, having the ability, the means and the, the, um, the reach, right, mm -hmm. to push certain images, right, and certain right. narratives. Um, and so there are those of us who are on the ground, right, 
in our way, in our small spaces, trying to teach, educate, and form, you know, our community on the realities, the, the, the real information right. of the history and sharing that knowledge, right? Mm -hmm. And I, I see that that's going to be that continuous um, struggle, um, mm -hmm. which I'm not quite sure if the, you know, it being, you know, this national holiday helps or hinders that process. But, you know, I say that to say in regards to, um, I know you, you know, the last time I heard you speak, we you talked about it briefly in regards to um, the flag that is being introduced, right? right. Um, I am struggling really hard, right? <laughs> really hard with that flag because in my head, because I feel as though we already have limited symbols you know, mm -hmm. at our disposal, mm -hmm. that really mm -hmm. was a reflection of our our collective, our community, our right. board, something that binds us together, right. right? And so for me, any little thing that is introduced, right, mm -hmm. that, that, you know, push, that, that removes or, um, you know, in some way takes away from what you already had, I feel it as being a threat because now, right. you know, what that thing yeah. represents, Yes, you know. what, what, what we have to recognize, you know, and I'm not an integrationist, I'm a black nationalist, yeah. right? But I don't represent the majority of black people, you know, and, and what we have to recognize is that um, for a lot of the organizers of Juneteenth, a lot of the elders that that like like Miss or oh, the beautiful Miss Opal Lee, who I know personally, you know, who has given me a community award before uh, and sat yeah. and talked talk to me, told me her story face to face some yeah. years ago, you know, because yeah. she's from my hometown. Um, yeah. Their goal is equality. Their goal is to be united treated as first class united states citizens and they have a right to that you know that no no one's bled for america like black people nobody right no group right and so they have a right to that whether we i agree with it or not they have a right to that that flag reminds me of the flag of liberia right liberia was a colony set up by the united states that was populated by black people over here who went and took and went and brought eurocentric ways into that area causing conflict uh uh when they took over that area the 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 capital was called monrovia named after president james monroe and the flag is red white and blue with one star in it yeah well the black community is a colony you know and 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 so that juneteenth flag it bothers me too, but at the same time, it reflects the attitude and the philosophy of those who created that flag, right? And so yeah. the red, white, and blue symbolizes the United States. And, and the fact of the matter is, as much of a black nationalist as I am, I'm a citizen, I'm a second class citizen, so called citizen of the United States of America. That flag represents a hope that that black people will be accepted as full fledged american citizens that's what it that's what that is right and so i don't have a problem with it in a sense that it's honest as far as that's what june that what that that was the the prevailing type of freedom that black people in america was looking for it, we yeah. were looking for that kind of freedom we weren't yeah. looking for nationhood right now I don't have an issue with the red, black, and green being a part of it because I believe all liberation struggles for black people are intrinsically connected, right? And, and, and so I don't have a problem seeing seeing the red, white, and blue flag, even though I'm not with it, but I also don't have a problem seeing the red, black, and green because that's not, people call it the Pan-African flag, but the UNIA called it the universal black liberation flag right and yeah. and, and and so <clears throat> that flag is a symbol for black people freedom for black people all over the globe even though black people in america have never really seriously sought a nationhood type of sovereignty as as a as a large group right we've been facilitators and influencers of black freedom throughout the globe kwame and was influenced by black people in America, 
right? Over mm -hmm. 25,000 black people from outside of America came to New York to listen to a Jamaican man by the name of Marcus Mosiah Garvey, who had a team full of black people for America, from mm -hmm. America, to develop the red, black, and green flag in the first place. And it's mm -hmm. the, the ability of black people in America to navigate white folk. We can finesse white folk. I think we're the best finessers of white people in the world, right? And for us to create that space in 1915, 1916, 1917, while Birth of a Nation was the biggest movie in the country, we're still creating safe spaces to discuss global African sovereignty. Mm -hmm. Something has to be said for that. That is true. That is true. That is true. Um, I, okay. I, I hear you. I hear you. And, um, <laughs> I, you know, it, it, I guess it doesn't have to be an either or. Right. In my head, it's an either or. <laughs> right. Right. Um, I, and I, at I some point, it, it is. It, it, yeah. it, it, at, some, at some point in our development, it is an either or. Yeah. It, it, at a certain stage in our development, you know. But the the dom predominantly the black community in America, we're not at the stage to where that decision has to be made today, mm. or can even be made today. Because we'll say, mm -hmm. no, we're not Americans. We're not. Th 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 but tomorrow we're going to go spend our money with America. Yeah. You yeah. You, you, you you know what I'm saying? So yeah. so so yeah. so. Yeah. so there's still some finessing and navigation that need yeah. that have to be done for those of us who would like to build sovereign communities mm. you know what I'm saying, for ourselves. Yeah. And, 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 you know, you said that, you know, um, um, Americans, black Americans have not really had the chance to, um, or, or they never sought to build a black nation. Right. Well, I'm talking uh, about as a, as a majority, we've always okay. had black nationalist organizations. Now exactly. that's all. Yeah, we've always had that. You know, yeah. I mean, I'm a part of a provisional. I'm part, I'm a part of a provisional government. You know, I vote. Uh, we we vote uh, officials in every three years. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. We have a national budget. You know, we we exercise governance. You know what I'm saying? As a provisional government, right mm -hmm. now, mm -hmm. that and that organization has been there for 55 years. You had mm -hmm. the UNIA. You had you know you, you did, uh, 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 Marcus Garvey and the UNIA did more than build a flag. You know, yeah. they, they build multiple businesses throughout yeah. the country. Right. Yeah. Uh, 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 building uh, communities, the nation of Islam, which was heavily influenced by the UNIA, you know, yeah. functions uh, as a nation within a nation. So we've always had black people that sought nationhood. But the mm -hmm. predominant, the prevailing strategy that, that, that came up out of it, the dominant strategy has been the assimilation integration strategy which has yeah. harmed us almost irreparable which is what you described it's a yeah. boomerang it's 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 designed where every gain you make you gotta exactly. pay back double exactly. Not, freedom ain't free in america and and, yeah, and, exactly. and and black folks pay double and triple for it yeah 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 i i i agree with you i i agree with you yeah. um and and what i what i've noticed is is that you know in that in that conversation of nationhood like i think not i think you know african americans never had that chance to go to that point never mm. you know um because of the system um that we live under i don't think they, they have not had because immediately after um, slavery, they formed and created institutions, right? Churches and organizations where they recognize themselves as, as Africans, right? First African um, community, um, you know, um, the churches. And so they had that identification as being African. Um, right. And then over, you know, over a period of time that has evolved and now we're African-American, Black, and for some yeah. of us, not, well, not, not none of us. Slavery during slave like in the 1700s when richard allen and absalom jones started the ame church african yeah. methodist episcopalian church you know yeah. we refer to ourselves as africans but let's look at it deeper uh um we may be the first group of black people on the planet to call ourselves africans mm. to name ourselves after a continent right mm. and why is that over 100 different ethnic groups were kidnapped from the continent of africa brought to america and mixed and mingled Right. We didn't all speak the same language on the slave ship. Then you have some indigenous people here who was just as dark as me and you that were here before Europeans got here. 
right? So mm -hmm. by the time you get to 300 years later, 1865, right? I don't know if I'm a Mandinka. I don't know if I'm Mende. I don't know. You don't know if you're Fulani. You don't know what you are as far yeah. as the nation or tribe or, or nation state that you come from. So now you're something new, right? Mm -hmm. Now yeah. you're something new. You know, that's why in the Republic of New Africa, we say New Africans. But where are New Africans from? We're from New Africa. But where is New Africa? New Africa is wherever we finally yeah, plant yeah. our flag and yeah. have a sovereign, sovereign government of our own. You know what I'm saying? But we're not the same. We were not the same black people in 1865 that came over in 1555. Yeah. Yeah. You know, and true. so thinking nationhood become even more difficult when you don't really have a nationality yeah 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 that is true that is that is true um and and so how do you see us as a community moving forward right <clears throat> now you're in this work this is you right so uh -huh. <laughs> you aren't doing it you're already doing it but for those of us right mm -hmm. who may not be in communities and spaces where their conversations as as this such as this that are happening where their organizations as you've mentioned that are present or where there are not groups that are um, really pushing to have these deeper level of conversations um, right. particularly not just on Juneteenth, June 16th, you know, that holiday weekend, but right. um, beyond as part of our life and who we are. Um, what do you recommend? How, you know, how do you see us or ideally move forward um, in mm -hmm. light of this? Because for me, it's more than just June 16th. I really think it should be more than just um, June 16th. Yeah. Um, yes. Oh, oh absolutely. You absolutely. You know, uh, when we say celebrate black freedom, we're talking about the future. You know, we're not saying we are where we think we are or where we should be. We're thinking we're talking about the future. We're talking about the victory. The first thing you have to see is victory. All right. You asked me to give advice. And, and what does that look I, like now? Huh? What does so, that look like? There you go. Now that's the conversation. And see what happens is we spend 90% of our time talking about the problems. Yes. And, and we don't spend enough time talking about what does that look like? You know, going yes. back to the Juneteenth theme, one of the biggest questions on the plantation after everybody got through shouting and singing, we free. Somebody said, well, what is freedom? Ooh. Then somebody yes. said, where is freedom? Somebody said, how is freedom? Mm -hmm. Right. And guess what? We had to start having that conversation and acting on it. We had to test the limits. These white folks mad. We got to see how mad they are. Who's going to be brave enough to go over there and build anyway and see how these white folks respond? Mm -hmm. Somebody got to do it. That's, yeah. you know, uh, one of the things that, that people don't know is that over 10,000 black troops were sent into Texas to guard black people in Texas. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Over 200,000 black troops fought in the Civil War. Yes. Yeah, you had over ten thousand lined up. Uh, ultimately, up to fifty thousand was sent into Texas during Reconstruction. Ten thousand or more were lined up along the Texas-Mexico border because you had French slave masters, slave runners, trying to take over Mexico and kidnap black people and take them into Mexico into slavery. Mm. Mm. And you had uh, Confederate so-called soldiers and slave masters trying to drum up some stuff, right? So, so we yeah. always fought. For our own for our own freedom right yeah and so that fight continues mm -hmm. so so what do i see i see the process continuing i see us uh uh, uh rediscovering each other either by choice or, or by force the economy mm -hmm. can cause you to have to circle your wagons and say you know what i guess you better start raising some chickens if we're gonna have some eggs oh, and, and, and oh, i COVID. better raise a goat if we're gonna have some butter you, you, you know what i'm saying and, yes, and, and yes. so so i see us coming uh uh coming back together uh i see them more and more worried at this country because of social media everybody's a media platform yeah so it's harder to control the narrative when, when everybody's not a media when everybody has access to media Right. I mean, yeah. look at white folks. They going crazy. They, they they can't get along. You know, I mean, I, I'm looking up yeah. and, and when Trump was president, he was like, you know, the, the Fed is crooked. You know, they, they're the feds are corrupt. I'm like, man, he sound like us. Oh. I say that. Yeah. 
You, you know what I'm saying? It is so so now yeah. everybody having a voice that can work to our advantage because that means we can speak to each other. We can think globally. Yeah. Right. Right. And and I and I see us yeah. think more globally as a yeah. people, doing more business across borders with one another by getting back to the land. I see more and more black people talking about wealth. Once you start talking about wealth, you don't stay on money long. The, the mo money is kindergarten when you're talking about wealth. It usually, it, eventually, that conversation is going to come to land, mm. right? And it's going to come to yeah. ownership, right? Yeah. And so, so yeah. I see that conversation coming. I see us building our own schools and not only building our own schools and our communities, but be, you can build a small school in Phoenix that has a global reach. I remember when we started the Uhura Academy, we were in a small church in the hood, but we were also communicating with students in Malawi. Mm, yes. You, yes. You, you, you see yes. what I'm saying? And raising money yep. for schools in Malawi. Yep. End up sending a yep. brother and his wife to Africa to directly give donations to this school in Malawi that we happen to be connected to through a sister from Malawi whose family lived in Dallas. The technology nice. allowed us to link it up. We're working with schools in Ghana right now, as you and yep. I speak. My, I have a math specialist that lives in South Africa. Yep. Right? So, so the African nice. world is getting nice. smaller and you and I having this conversation right here. Yeah. That's another feather in the cap. Yeah. So, so yeah. I see us yeah. winning. That's what I see. I see those who black, white people don't just attack us. Europeans have a conflict issue, period. They fight each other too. Like the white world is on the brink of war right now with Ukraine, Russia, Europe, the 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 uh, euro collapsing, the whole nine yards, right? You 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 can't maintain that house and control our house at the same time. Mm, yeah, that is true. That is true. That is true. And and I think and I think it's now is a critical time, an important time for us to take advantage of everything that you've just mentioned, mm -hmm. right? For us to move forward. Um, in, in elevating as a community and as a collective. And I'm glad that you mentioned, right. you know, the global reach, right? Because, you know, I, I myself identify myself as a Pan-Africanist, um, you know, right. with base, um, my, you know, origins, um, you know, in, in Guyana, living here. And as a result of my business and the work that I do have, you know, reaches in the continent. And so it's, you know, we're all, we're all going through various degrees of the same kind of, um, I don't want to use the word oppression, but various degrees of the same kind um, of, of, of indignities, right? Yes, Travel. indignities. Yes, absolutely. You know, indignities for we and, and and this allows us to, you know, have those conversations um, across right. borders, these um in in a in a productive way um right. and 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 share the resources and you know in the different capacities that we have um to 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 elevate right. us um and, and i think we i think part of healing that zoe is talking more about our common opportunities yes than than yes. just our common addiction. No. when we come together when we unify based on the pain that we're in right yeah. Then it's about alleviating the pain. And sometimes mm. in order to alleviate the pain, I needed to get out from by you. Mm. You know, I mean, matter of fact, when I can't when I can't go and attack the person that causes my pain, I'll probably turn on you and start blaming yeah. you. But yeah. that's all we talk about is the pain. Exactly. The problem we ain't talking about nothing else. Yeah. But if we talk about the opportunities, that's when ideas come up. Yeah. That's when we get creative. You know, yeah. okay, this is what we don't have. What do we yeah. have? And how do we build on that? And my thing is, if you're not, if you can't look in the mirror and say, I'm operating to the exact point that white supremacy stops me, then you got work to do. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. And, you, and I, yeah. And, 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 and you know, I tell, I tell a, a good friend of mine is um, whatever it is that we were prevented from doing, that's exactly what we should be doing. Right. Prevented mm -hmm. from forming families. Right. That's another right. big thing. Right. Preventing from being a collective and and, and being a connection of our mm -hmm. true culture. Right. If certain things were stripped away from us, maybe we should work doubly hard. Right. right. In um, regaining those things right. um, as a way in which we can That's then, right. you know, serve towards right. healing. and being One, one of the things we have to assess is how much of what's holding us back 
depends upon our participation in exactly. order to hold us back. Yeah. The, anything that, that's going on with us that we have to participate in in order for it to work, we can change those yep. if we just change our level of participation. Yep. And that's that's why we focus on education and the transform it. and transformative education. Love so it. wait a minute. Hold up. Hold up. You can only hold me here if I stay here. Oh, I'm going to get up and go. When when Juneteenth happened, you had white people look at white slave owners, look at black people and say, you know, ain't no, you know, when you go out here, it's crazy out there. You don't want to leave here. Didn't I give you extra sugar cane last year? Ain't I been a good master to you? Where are you going to go? It's people starving. It's all kind of stuff happening out there. Don't leave. And a lot of black people said, you know what, master? You're right. I'm going to stay put. You're right. going to rebuild this plantation. But some black people yeah. said, you know what? I'd rather die than be here. Some black people said any place is better than here. Some black people said, no, I know it's something out there greater for me than here. And I'm going to take my chances and I'm going to go. We still yeah. have that dynamic today. We do. We do. We do. And um, that is powerful, 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 powerful. And so <laughs> on that note, yes. I am going to leave us with that point. Right. Let us think um, um, someone. Uh, Ashante, thank you. Self-reflection. Thank you for that, right? Let us look inwards and think deeply and ask ourselves, which category do we fall under? Which right. category do we fall under, right? Or do, do we see ourselves as the ones who are willingly, uh, passively wanting to be a part of the um, of what is right like mm -hmm. we of, of the, the current existence are right. you the one who falls under the category of you know what questioning what you know what is better you know believing that there must be something better and are you those who are saying i am going to take this chance take this risk come what may right mm -hmm. and step out and go beyond for what is the best That's um right. and 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 so um, in moving forward, I think we, you know, we should lead in the way we live our lives and the way we connect with each other and the way we um, work with each other and live with each other with that in mind is where do we fall under, right? In, mm -hmm. in, in, in that mindset of moving forward and taking that leap, right? And doing what is best or in that way of acceptance. Um, and that can look like various, various ways. So um, I think that's a really, really great ending point that you made, um, Baba Amin. Oh, yeah. I don't know if you have any lasting words. Hey, um, you know, great job. You know, thank you for having me. Uh, I have You're to welcome. get the external link too, so I can share this on all my platforms. Uh, sure. Yes. Uh, yes. You know, um, um, but yes, you know, I think I think the point that you made uh, closing us out was perfect. Um, um, it, it begins with self reflection. And you have to ask yourself, you know, what does freedom look like for you? Mm -hmm. What does the day after freedom look like for you? And, yeah. and, and that's what Juneteenth represents. Juneteenth yeah. represents a people that are sincerely fighting, sacrificing and building for their freedom to create the type of freedom that they know in their heart yeah. exists for them. And exactly. that's why we celebrate. That's why we come together because freedom is a process. It's awesome. not an event. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank love you it. Love me. it. That was great. That was great. Um, thank you to everyone who joined me on my first um, podcast <laughs> show. Um, thank you for your comments, Baba. Um, can you see the comments too? Are you able I to? I can't see the comments because no? we're. Wait a minute. Hold on. Let me see some. Oh, I can see them. Yes, I was in the wrong up. place. I see Brother Bilal. I see yes. Jamikas. I yes, see Asante, yes, yes. Quante, yes. Marie. Yes, yes. So they're I all see. there. They're they're commenting, commenting there. So um, thank you, everyone, for being here, joining me, and being a part of this great conversation. And this is not the last. This is the first, and we will continue to have more. And I will, about Baba Amin, if you're open to it, and down the future, at some point, we'll be more than happy hey, to invite anytime. you again. Anytime, you already know. Great. Thank you. And um, please, peace and blessings, and good evening to your wife. Please tell her I say hi. Absolutely. Thank you. Thank you. Um, just to make sure, um, 
the link. So you said you want to have the external link. You're you're professional at this. Where do I go to find the link? Well, you know what? I see it now. I thought you may have been streaming on YouTube or something at the same time. But I, the link I, I have is good. I'll share that one. The, the, okay. Uh, awesome. Yes. Great, great, yes. Great, yes. Great. No, I, I, yeah, I have the one you sent me to come in. That's the one I'll, I'll send. You'll use? Okay. Great, great, yes. great. Thank you. All right. Well, All good right. evening. Good evening to you. Have and a great one. Thanks. Peace you and too. power, y'all. Bye. Bye, everybody.